Hi and welcome back to a new video. In the previous video I promised that we will quickly try to use this Corsair AIO cooling solution. So that is a 15 year old, pretty much the first AIO Corsair ever produced and it's called Nautilus 500. Yeah, I'm not sure if, if that was the first AIO but it also has been used previously. It was a used item on eBay I bought several years ago so it's quite unclear. Uh, about like performance usage if it's like blocked inside or whatever but we, we will find out we will check out the entire cooling system like the entire Nautilus 500. For comparison reasons I set up a rig right here with a 11900k running 5 gigahertz manual overclocked across all cores. I mean what would be better to test the temperature results right than using an, an 11900k. As I said before, a CPU is manually overclocked across all cores, about 1.32 volts, so that should be a decent amount of heat, probably something like 220-230 watt under load. It's the MSI setup we used also in one of the previous videos, so if you want to get more information about the overclock setting, you can probably find that in the MSI video. I have been running the 3 Mark times by Extreme in a loop test, that was the test I decided to go for today has been running for 15 minutes. Let's check out the temperatures which we have with our Deepcool Assassin 3 CPU cooler for comparison. Seasonic, the heart of your system. You can see hardware info running and in the background there is still the 3D mic workload and just looking at the maximum or the peak temperatures across all cores if we take the average of the maximum it is 83 degrees Celsius. That will be our base. We will first start investigating the CPU block because that's probably the like least special part about this AIO. There's not much we can see. It looks like it contains out of two pieces of copper. Could be that it's like welded together. Looking at the base part, like the contact piece, in the center it looks a bit like oxidized, which is not really an issue. Like this is more like a visual thing, but performance wise shouldn't have an impact. Maybe I will grind this a little bit, but yeah shouldn't have any kind of like huge impact on the performance. Unfortunately, because we cannot really take this apart because it looks like welded, yeah, or like cold forged, but we cannot take a look inside the structure. I tried to look like through those holes, but there's nothing we can really see. And uh, yeah, it just came assembled like this back then 15 years ago from Corsair. And uh, yeah, there was never the chance to like look really inside. That's why I also couldn't find any pictures of this online. We have those quick connect fittings which are directly attached to the CPU cooling unit. Obviously back then when it came it did not come pre-filled with this greenish fluid but this is also like the green original fluid which was originally um, like delivered from Corsair. And here we have the frame which we made for our cooling block. Very simple. Just put it on and this way we should be able to mount this on our 11900K. And here we have the external water cooling unit. It's actually, it's a kind of an AIO, but it's like an external AIO. Nautilus 500, it's probably called. I'm not sure how to exactly say that in English, but you can see one fan, which from the orientation looks like it's blowing out. Here we have the access to our reservoir, I guess. This seems to be like an indicator of how much fluid is sitting inside the reservoir, but I cannot really like see anything, even though you can hear there is still some fluid sitting inside. Otherwise, it's pretty much just a big black plastic box <laughs> which would sit on top of your PC. If you turn it around, you can see an aluminum radiator which is sitting inside. It looks to be kind of exactly the same type of aluminum radiator which we saw on the Leviathan graphics card which we reviewed a while ago. And on the back side, we have the quick connect fittings, like um, fluid in and fluid out. I think the Corsair link also changed. It's not CorsairMemory.com anymore, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, the power connector is kind of funny as well, because this connector type, by the way, we have fan high and low as the setting as well, but this power connector kind of looks exactly the same as the ATX12VO power connector, which we reviewed several weeks ago. Pretty funny, it's like 15 years old, but now those kind of cables seem to make their way into the desktop computer units. And that is the power adapter. So we have a four pin Molex connector and then like a slot bracket for external access. And there we have the external four pin connector. So you use this, this extension cord to connect it to your external water cooling unit. 
All right, I will open it up, see how it looks like inside. Honestly, I'm very impressed. This is very clean. Considering that this is 15 years old and has been used, you can see some dust on the, on the inside of the fan, but it's extremely clean. Also, like no residues whatsoever inside, like the tubing, what you can see. And also, if we take a look inside the reservoir, you can see the Hulk sweat sitting inside, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, so just matters what kind of cool, coolant you're using. Considering that it's an aluminum radiator and we're using like material mixture with the copper based um, CPU cooling block. Looks like they had a very good choice of the coolant. The coolant looks great. Pretty sure it's also the original coolant because looking at the images I could find from like 15 years ago, it was exactly that stuff. And there is a DDC as a pump sitting inside, which is also very surprising. I thought there would be one of those like low power industrial, like old automotive pumps sitting inside similar to what we saw with the Leviathan card, but DDC pump should have a decent amount of power to get a good flow rate for this cooling unit. And yeah, very impressed with the build quality. Considering the age of this, very clean. Yeah. All right, I will leave this open for a second. We'll mount the block on the setup so we can see what kind of flow rate we're getting. Should be very interesting. Neglecting those clips, yeah, this would look like and nowadays water cooling block, I think looks quite nice. Also those, uh, those are actually my LN2 mounting like M4 screw heads and they fit very well to the gold on the motherboard with this aluminum look. It's pretty decent. So the only thing that remains is attaching it to the water cooling loop and then we will check out the performance. I connected everything and I also just found out that this black four pin cable also contains the signals for two times like uh, RPM signals like two times those three pin connectors. So in theory, we should be able to control both the fan and the pump and not only adjust it over this switch. Should be interesting. I also organized some additional distilled water because you can see there's a lot of air inside those tubings and not sure if the amount of fluid inside the tank will be enough. You can probably hear there's a lot of like turbulence, water stuff going inside, uh, going on inside the tank. I mean, it's enough water to just power the entire loop, but it's not much left in the reservoir, which means that we will have eventually some bubbles and stuff inside the tubing. So we'll, I will add more water, but then it should be good to go. It looks very promising. Like the flow rate is also looking very good. Adding the fan back on to close it off. Again, 15 minutes of testing in 3D Mark times by Extreme. The temperatures actually look quite decent. The maximum temperature is about two degrees Celsius on average higher than using the Deep Cool Assassin 3 CPU cooler, which is like a like most recent standard uh, air cooling unit. And looking at the low temperatures, which just dropped because the loop test will start over again, but they were somewhere between like 70, 75 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely fine. So I guess in a gaming scenario, this would absolutely work for 11900K, even with manual overclocking. I guess you would see temperatures of about 65 degrees Celsius under load. But to be fair, this is louder than our Deepcool Assassin 3, but we will switch it to like a low RPM, which is like comparable. Just the pump is a little bit louder, but I guess we can kind of neglect that when it comes to performance. All right, let's keep this on for 15 more minutes and double check. Okay, I wanted to present the temperature results to you, but then Windows died, yeah. But I checked the results and they were about four degrees uh, less or four degrees worse than before, which was still in a range, which, which is okay. Like it's getting into the 90s, but considering that it's an 11900K manually overclocked running a 3D mark benchmark, that's absolutely fine. Like for any gaming application, this would work absolutely well. But then it's also very loud, but that's only because of the pump. 
The fan is okay if you put it to like low RPM, but you cannot adjust the RPM of the pump or of the fan. Even if you have those like signals going to the motherboard, those are really just signals. Like if you would like to set an alarm, for example, if there's like zero RPM, you can read it out over the mainboard, but you cannot adjust the RPM, which makes sense because it's like not no PWM, right? But yeah, I mean, it's a normal, ordinary DDC. So if you would put more work into this, you could definitely do some kind of voltage regulation for the pump to lower down the RPM and then it would be absolutely fine. Like this, it would be too loud. Like on a daily basis, it would be quite annoying, but per performance wise, it was absolutely great. Like any gaming application, this would be absolutely fine. Considering it's 15 years old and no issues whatsoever, like no blocked stuff inside the, the cooler, inside the reservoir, inside the uh, like radiator. Yeah, I absolutely enjoyed this and I hope you enjoyed it too. All right, thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Bye bye.